beautiful morning and we're leaving Fort Frederica we learned a lot here at Fort Frederica one of the things we learned was uh, you anchor in the straightaways that's where the mud is the the bends are completely scoured out and another thing we learned is uh, once you drop your anchor you keep power on keep it slack and just let the anchor drop through the mud and then you don't back down you just you just let it lay down gracefully and hope it holds maze of marsh grass going out and as you can see if you get caught out in here in a blow there's just really nothing for you out here so you want to try to make that fort if you got something coming in sometimes you can see there are super structures over the marsh grass and uh, sometimes you can't it's kind of spooky in a way you see all these mass whirling around you know they're going somewhere the depths I've found in here are actually a little deeper than uh, what's on the chart so unless you're a oil tanker or navy uh, vessel or something like that I don't see the problem with a prudent person coming twisting and turning up in this uh, this little river what happens is you come around a bend here and bang there's the regular intercoastal right up ahead of you what's going on here today is we're crossing three flooded rivers and the first coming up here is the Altamaha and we're crossing the river proper well, what we're doing right now is we're making this hairpin turn it's 58 degrees that's why I got gloves on and hooking back in we have been doing 8.4 mile an hour and uh, we'll probably slow down to about five as we come back against the current here all right red 198 is our hairpin turn river here we're going to swing around and uh, and we'll have a range we'll line up those two reds with each other so it forms a single line and that will get us back up the channel all right we've turned the corner and now Connie's lining up the range and we're going to take a hard right turn right up this way that big treed island over there is Sapelo Island. Now from here on up to North Carolina, this is uh, Blackbeard Haunts. I mean, he'd recognize any of this stuff as we're going on up. Plenty of places to hide out, dart out, and snatch a ship. Now we're in behind Sapelo Island. And we're heading into an area called Crichton Narrows. Right up here, here's your turn where all the reds and all right, it's a real narrow channel going up through here, and you have to pay close attention. The tip of Sapelo Island out there is where we're going. That's the uh, sound out there. We have a six mile open water run. 151 is going to begin our junction with the uh, Sapelo River. That's 158, it just went past you. And we're heading almost east. We'll head almost right to the Atlantic. That's the tip, northern tip of Sapelo Island. What we're trying to do right now is kind of shave off this lip and head up here. The green 137. Now that's the north tip of Sapelo Island. See, so you got breakers. Breakers out in the middle. And we have breakers all along the southern shore of our inlet. Just swing on around. We got breakers on the inside of the inlet. That's the Merlin going by, gave us a good smooth pass. 
Okay, from Johnson's Creek, uh, 125 puts you into the North uh, Newport River. And we're going to hang a hard turn to starboard here to the right and head right on up into and uh, try to cross St. Catherine Sound. This can be really nasty if uh, you got an opposing tide. Looking right in, coming across. We've got a, about a half an hour to do this before the tide turns. This one mile will take us 10 minutes to get across. Well, so far so good. We've got until 2.38 to get this done before the tide shifts. So that's what we're looking at right now. All right, now we just had a real good passage between St. Catharines and Ossabaugh Island here. And we made it at slack tide with a north wind, and that worked for us. So it was smooth, and I'm grateful for that. Now behind Ossabaugh Island, all the way up to uh, Savannah here, we've just got uh, more marsh grass to go through, and that tower up there represents Savannah about 15 miles up the pike right now. And we're all out here turning in the grass and watching these masts go from us and towards us. All right, we've got the north uh, end of Osaba Islands on our right. And to our left is a little cut, which we've come around, got in the Ogeechee River, and it'll take us to the little Ogeechee River where we can uh, get up to Savannah. We're going to take that and swap over to another river. Okay, we've come out of the Hell's Gate cut over here and do the river's flooding. You can see we're down to about uh, 4.1 mile an hour. Not very fast. 3.9 up here at this little island, your sight picture going into Savannah, you're going to have the Little Ogeechee and the Vernon join and a bunch of others. The thing you want to remember basically is just keep bearing to the uh, to starboard to your right when you're going northbound and looking up the Vernon River. This is Green Island I'm filming going up the Vernon River. We don't travel after dark on flooded rivers because you can see all the trees that are on the shoreline well they're in the rivers too when they're flooded and you can you can take a tree just like a torpedo and ruin your whole night so uh, when we're traveling if the river's flooded daytime operation only now, if you ever watch the film uh, Hog Hunting that Connie and I put together from a uh, hunting experience I had as a boy, that straight line of that hog out there is what I saw in the grass. And here we are. We're about this position right here. Hogs. Burnside River hooks right around. Now we're not going to do anything funny here. We've had 11 hours on the water come 75 miles. Here's the bend we're in right here. We're just going to come right around here, hook into this little channel, and take the charted anchorage this time. And that'll be it for tonight. I'm just using the GPS to hook us right around. That's what it looks like. We're just going to drop the hook within the first 50 yards here.